Hey guys, Epic Blogman here, and today I'll be reviewing Hokuto no Ken, otherwise known as Fist of the North Star. So, Fist of the North Star was created by Tetsuo Hara, and it was serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump from 1983 to 1988. Despite this series' demographic being shonen, I feel there's a lot of disturbing, violent moments and other things you know, that they weren't able to show in the actual anime. Fun fact, this series is actually what inspired Hirohiko Araki to create Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and even share a similar art style for a while. Fist of the North Star is pretty much the definition of 80s and it's up there among my favorite anime of all time. So the story and plot of Fist of the North Star the story of Fist of the North Star is that in the 199X, or basically the 1990s, there was a nuclear war or a nuclear holocaust, and basically so much things died out. 30% of humanity was able to survive somehow, and right now the world in Fist of the North Star is basically a post-apocalyptic state where the strong rule over the weak and survivors basically have to survive by finding food and water and clothing and shelter and everything. And they also have to avoid radioactive contamination and radioactive areas and such. So the whole world is basically like this giant desert but it has like tons of mountain ranges and there's actually cities left over but there's very few remaining cities that actually exist and people have regressed to the point where they call the cities villages. There's actually also shown to be underground bunkers that were left over and there's also leftover vehicles and there's even guns lying around in the wastelands. But the whole thing with the series though is that that stuff is useless because pretty much the people who actually rule over the world in this story are people who know fighting styles, which I will get to in a second. So basically our main protagonist is Kenshiro. He is a survivor of the nuclear fallout. He is wandering the wasteland in search of water after having survived a fight with Shin, a Nento Seiken master. So Shin kidnapped Kenshiro's fiance, Yuria, and he also poked holes into Kenshiro's body giving him the seven scars of the Big Dipper and leaving him almost near death. When Kenshiro reaches a village, he befriends two kids, Rin and Bat. When the village is attacked by a biker gang, Ken basically saves Rin and everybody, and afterwards he sets out on a journey to find Shin because he wants to get revenge and save Yuria. But at the same time, over the course of the story, what happens is... Shin sends out more biker gangs and assassins to kill Ken. Now, Kenshiro does know a martial art, and it's an insane martial art. So, Kenshiro is the successor to a deadly martial art called Hokuto Shinken, or Big Dipper God Fist. And it's basically a 1,800 year old martial art dating back from China. The technique is extremely dangerous and causes wounds or even death. It involves the user striking any 708 pressure points on the human body. It causes a lot of different things to happen. The person explodes in a violent death. They explode into like blood and mush, like their head explodes or their arms explode or their chests explode. It's gruesome and very brutal. The main purpose of this technique is assassination but it can actually also be used to heal physical and psychological wounds such as restoring a person's voice or restoring a person's eyesight or even their memories. The practitioner of Hokuto Shinken can tap into 100% of their strength. Kenshiro states that a normal person only uses 30% of their strength. The practitioner of Hokuto Shinken can also do some very bizarre key aura based attacks that radiate from the user's body. But the ultimate strength in the martial art comes from love and sadness, which they must experience to fight with the art at its peak. Hokuto Shinken can only have one successor per generation. Students who fail must have their fist crushed or their memories erased. 
It's pretty crazy. So, for the characters, Kenshiro is the main character, however, Rin and Bat accompany him for most of the anime. What I like about Kenshiro is despite the fact he's made out to be a super strong, muscular character who survives a ton of crazy stuff, the anime and manga actually still humanizes him. What I mean by this is there's several times where Kenshiro is badly wounded by normal things like knives, or poison, or guns, and he's on the brink of death, but he somehow manages to survive. Tetsuo Ohara tries his best not to make Kenshiro seem 100% invincible with plot armor. The antagonist characters are also interesting. There's a variety of characters and side characters, and no actual main antagonist is inherently evil. As the fights in the anime go on, a lot of backstory and character stories and character development is revealed for both protagonists and antagonists. There's a lot of gray areas, despite some of the characters and fights being over the top. So, the art and animation. This anime was adapted by Toei Animation, who have adapted other legendary works such as Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, and One Piece. The art and the anime is akin to Tetsuo Hara's manga counterpart, and there's a lot of beautiful 80s cell drawings. There's a lot of pastel colored skies and grungy pastel backgrounds like mountains or post-apocalyptic cities, which really captures the vibe of Fist of the North Star. The animation is decent at best. There are times where there's just a lot of still shots. However, Toei saved most of their budget for key scenes, and when those key scenes happen, the animation is really good. This is also one of Toei's least censored series in comparison to their other works. The music was composed by Nozomi Aoki. It has a lot of electronic orchestral vibes and a lot of the tracks are very memorable and recognizable. The opening theme is extremely good and it's well recognized in the anime community. The ending theme is very calm and sad sounding and I like it as well. It's not until the second part of the story where a track called Silent Survivor kicks in and it just gets you pumped. The sound effects though were generally good and the voice acting is, in my opinion, legendary. Kenshiro's voice actor Akira Kamiya did an amazing job with his role. In my opinion, no one else could ever replace this dude's voice for Kenshiro. I also really liked Rei's voice actor and I also liked the Warden's voice actor who was Daisuke Gori who was also legendary as well. And I was also surprised to hear Kuma's voice actor from One Piece. He was actually voicing a character in the anime. So the final verdict. I would definitely recommend Fist of the North Star. I would give it an 8 out of 10. Great art, great characters, great story, awesome fights, and an awesome soundtrack. The anime has over 109 episodes, so it may take you a while to finish it unless you're binge watching it. But it's well worth it. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Fist of the North Star, and I will see you guys in the next video.